You're watching New Car Spin. I'm your host, Brian Grant, where I put the spin on new cars. And if you're new here, please like and subscribe. And let me explain what I do. I shoot in real time, and I give you the real experience. And today is a little different. Today I'm going to talk about sex drive. Because there's things like oysters, pistachios, uh, raspberries, watermelon, all these types of things that people can use to just kind of amp up the experience. But there's also sports cars. There's exotics. Ferraris, Rolls Royce, you know, Raptors, Defenders. The list can go on and on and on and on, right? And uh, the thing here is, is this, is, this, is this sexy enough? Is this enough? Because this is all great, but it, it's, it meets regulations around the world. They're, they're highly engineered. After a while, they're all kind of the same, aren't they? So they don't really stand out as much as you'd expect. They're not really that customizable. Let's, let me show you something that, uh, that doesn't have bumpers, doesn't have a stereo, doesn't have doors, you can't lock it. It's, it's amazing, and it's right in here. By the way, I'm at Tactical Fleet, and there it is. This is the BAC Mono, and it has 305 horsepower, it has a four-cylinder naturally aspirated racing engine. And you may wonder what BAC stands for. BAC stands for Briggs Automotive Company. And fortunately enough, I do have Neil Briggs here. He's going to explain this vehicle a little bit more. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, cool. Hey. So this is, your, this is your masterpiece. Uh, well... So um, I'm one of the two co-founders with 30 people based out of Liverpool. This is uh, one of four cars that's coming to Texas. Nice. Um, here at Tactical Fleet. An incredible one-of-a-kind car. So uh, this car's got a lot of bespoke features on it. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the color scheme that you'll see here has been designed by our, our dyne team who were responsible for designing the, uh, the exterior shape of the car. Uh, took some influences from, from Tactical Fleet's corporate images and came up with something that really is super striking. Oh, Shows definitely. Off some of the, uh, the features of the car. That's one of the ways why the car is so light. So it's basically uh, just less than 1,300 pounds. The car is designed all for the enjoyment of driving. And that's why the whole car is designed all around the driver. Uh, and to that end, that's why the car only has one seat because it's a formula style layout that's the optimum for performance, also for weight distribution, left and right, but also front and aft as well. Uh, and that's why the car is designed all around the driver. Uh, the seat's molded to the driver's, uh, to the driver's shape. It's very easy to take the seat out. Um, and put someone else's seat in should you ever uh, sell the car or say for example if you're a fractional owner in a car you could have two seats a couple of guys could, could have that we have some customers who do that awesome um, steering wheel is uh, also this is the standard steering wheel that you see here but you can also bespoke that so that the steering wheel is molded to the driver's hands there's a carbon version that we do also as well wow and the steering wheel is uh, adjustable in rake and reach and the pedal box is also adjustable so the driver position is fixed that optimizes the weight distribution but also the safety aspects of the car as well uh, but it also allows uh, the car to be, to be set up bespoke to the individual okay and speaking of safety you can drive this on the track, but you can drive it to the track because it's road legal. Yes, you can. Yeah, the car is road legal, so um, we uh, we operate under a uh, a nice volume program here in the US, but also in the UK and Europe. Okay. Um, for low volume manufacturers, um, so the car has everything that it needs in terms of uh, wheel arch, wheel arch uh, aperture covers, indicators, lights, safety belts. Um, uh, safety systems on the car. Uh, is that is that what this is here, the middle brake light? Yeah, so this is a high mounted stop lamp here in the car. So that this point here on the car is, is just over 1.2 uh, meters high. So the car is very low. Um, and in order to make the car quite distinguishable, we have obviously the standard uh, reflectors and brake lights, but we also have this high mount stop lamp uh, in the top there, just so that the car is easily recognisable, particularly um, at night. Um, but what's great is, particularly when you stand back from here, is it, that you, you really see how the car is sculpted, how it's uh, very tightly packaged uh, with all the components in here in order to try and keep everything on that thick and centre line. It's very lean. Yeah, it is very lean. Yeah. Um, and, and I like that you can kind of see through and 
and you kind of had a have an idea of everything that this car is made of. Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, I think what's great is, particularly with the car being in here, uh, most cars are what's called a, a three box volume. So if you look at the car, generally a, 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 any kind of car, well, there'll be a box at the front, which is either storage where the engine goes, a box in the middle, which is where the driver sits, and a box at the rear where the engine or again storage is. And pretty much every car is just a is just a modification of that of that three box volume. Yeah. Um, so in this case, the box at the front is slightly bigger. The box in the middle is narrow, and there's, there's less of a less of a box up there. Mm -hmm. That's what just most cars are. It doesn't matter whether it's a Rolls Royce, a Lamborghini, Ferrari, or Porsche. True. With our car, um, the wheelbase actually on this car is the same as the uh, as the 488, almost down to the millimeters. So wow. The footprint of the car is the same, but what it doesn't have is it doesn't have these box volumes that sit really of the car. Um, as you said rightly earlier, that you can see through the car. Um, so the, the, the car is, is designed with what we call negative space, negative volumes. Um, so you can see through the car. Um, it, it, its shape is created with surfaces, along with volumes, and that what's what that's what gives it this uh, this feeling of, of athleticism and ultimately of performance. And it only has what it needs: no door locks, no stereo, no air conditioning. It does have a little bit of a lip here, though. This is the windscreen, right? Yeah, so, so well, this is what we call our aero screen. This basically trips the, uh, the airflow over the driver's head and, uh, and into the air intake here, then goes through a, a filtration system that's, that's, that's through here, and then ultimately it's fed in through the air box into the engine, goes through the engine, and then comes out through the four into two into one exhaust system, which is stainless steel. Um, it's ceramic-coated uh, via a catalyst. Um, and then goes out obviously through the, through the rear muffler and meets meets mission regulations and, uh, and sound and so on. And it's also the fastest rear-wheel drive sports car. It's the fastest rear-wheel drive accelerating car in the world, so 0 to 60 is 2.7 seconds. Uh, but I think what's most impressive with this car is when you put a combination of its lightweightness, um, its top speed, the way the car accelerates, the way the car brakes, the way it corners, the way it steers, the way it handles, and you put all that together in a package and you really have something that's, that's on a different level um, in terms of lap time and as a driving, driving experience. Uh, it's... it's uh, it really needs to be uh, be experienced to understand fully, really. Oh, I bet. So, um, t two questions. Can we see the glove box? Yeah, sure you can. Yeah. Uh, so, actually, there's a little bit more stories than a glove box, actually. I mean, okay. obviously, the car, is, the car is very focused. It's very niche. But what we'd like to think is that we've considered all of the things that the driver uh, has to consider uh, when he's driving the car. So to that extent, the first practical thing is the driver has to get in the car. Oh yeah. Uh, and that's why you'll see that the car has this kind of violin, wasted shape, so that the, 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 the occupant can get first into the side of the car. Next thing is is that the steering wheel is removable. Nice. So basically, we have this, uh, this quick release system here. All of the communication for the electronics happens down that very small. Uh, connector there, which then goes down through the centre um, of the of the steering column. Um, so the steering wheel is removable. That's the first thing that allows the driver to get in and out of the car. The driver steps on the seat, sits himself down, and, and, and straps himself in, and then puts the steering wheel back on. And then inside the cockpit itself, um, we have these storage areas where you can basically fit an iPhone in there. Um, so you can. You can put your things in there. The key for the car that starts it when the immobilizer is then. Oh, okay. It does have a key. Yeah, it does have a key. So <laughs> it's not a key start as such. Um, the keys are used to do things like put the fuel in uh, and also open the front storage hatch. Uh, okay. That's what the keys predominantly used for. Uh, but there is a um, uh, a key fob which basically uh, triggers the immobilizer so the car can't be, can't be stolen, basically. Obviously, yeah. We, then, we... Uh, in the front of the car here, we have uh, two storage areas. So we have uh, an area here for, for um, the, 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 the cockpit storm cover, which basically is a cover that you can fit over the car when it's parked up if it looks like it's going to rain. Okay. And then in the front here, we've got about 75 cubic litres of space. For a helmet? For, well, it can be anything that you want. It could okay. be a uh, it could be a laptop bag if it's your daily drive on the way to work, for example. It could be a, a backpack if you're going away on a driving weekend, tent, whatever. Um, but the idea and the theory was that you'd take your helmet off, you take your bag out, you take your helmet and your steering wheel off, and you can lock them all in the front of the car. Okay. They're nice and safe, and then you go off with your weekend bag and you stay in your hotel or you do what you do. Very and cool. That was the that was the logic and the thinking. Can we hear it? 
I did to speak to Chris and, uh, and Jason about that, whether you can start it. I'm sure they could start it up for you. I mean, I think the thing I would say about the sound of the car, it's a four-cylinder four inline engine. The car has to meet road legal specifications in terms of sound and noise and emissions. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if you start the car that the car sounds like a Formula One car. It's actually quite understated until you start to build up the RPM. One last question. Uh, I know you, you have a brother. I've, I have brothers too. So we used to compete like with Legos and, and drawings, like who could build the coolest or design the best. Did you do that with Ian? Not really, no. I mean, I, uh, my interest has always been around. Um, so I'm an engineer and Ian's, a, let's call him the artist or the designer in this case. And it was really a question of, of when the two of us came together. We've been doing that many years through our automotive design consultancy and working for the clients that the business has worked for. Um, you know, and what's great is, is that we have an overlapping and understanding of each other areas of specialism. Um, but at the end of the day, the final word, you know, um, sits with that individual. Um, but we have a good appreciation and understanding of what each other does. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Ian's a pretty good driver as well. And so, you know, he, he, he knows that the car has to deliver from a, from a driving dynamic perspective. And also, um, you know... Yes, the car has all these amazing groundbreaking stats, but honestly, any one of your viewers or readers could, could drive this car. You don't have to be a professional driver to drive it. So for me, that was part of, of, of my brief, was not only to make sure that the car drove as well as it looked, but also that anyone of any, of any uh, skill level can enjoy the car. Because so the car's very accessible. That's everything from steering efforts to pedal efforts, um, clutch. Um, so that everyone gets out the car with a smile on their face um, and enjoying their, their valuable uh, free time. And any really cool feature you're really excited about? And then I know it's bespoke, and these cars are unique, and you produce about uh, seven or eight a month. No, we're actually we're actually at three a month at the moment. Three a month, um, okay. But yeah, I mean, I don't know any one particular feature. I mean, the way the car looks is, is I, I I really like this view from the back actually. Uh, so looking, looking down from this particular angle is, is one I love the way the, uh, the contrast of the different materials, how you see exposed elements of, um, of some of the engineering actually, and particularly the, the gearbox and the suspension. Um, there's so much, so much about the car really, every, every single area has been thought about ad infinitum, I mean the, the wheels and the brake package as an example, um, is some of our most recent innovation, it's a it's a two-piece wheel, it's a carbon outer, um, and it's a uh, forged CNC machined uh, aluminium centerpiece with a, um, titanium bolts that hold the whole uh, system together. You know, this is the lightest 17-inch wheel in the world, uh, and that's two kilos lighter than, than our standard alloy wheel, which was already the lightest 17-inch wheel in the world. Wow. Um, so we're not just pushing the boundaries of, of, uh, of, of what a small... A small business can do. We're really pushing the boundaries of the entire industry, really, and that's what's great about BACs. We're in that space where we can be innovative, we can be disruptive, and we can start to get some of the new technologies on the car that will be adopted by by bigger manufacturers, uh, you know, in the future. And uh, from the ground up, though, you guys have now developed tires with Pirellis. You have you have slicks, you have wet, and then Trofeo Rs. That's absolutely right. Yeah. So two year program with Pirelli. It's been fantastic and a real pleasure to work with those guys. What we've now got is a real staircase of, of performance, so customers can get to get to know the car with uh, with the bespoke Trofeo tyre that's been developed, and then they bolt the slicks on. They can go five or six seconds a lap uh, quicker with that with that slick tyre. So Pirelli were really keen to be involved with it because there was a, a real technical challenge, uh, and some of the knowledge that they've gained from Formula One, um, they've managed to uh, they've managed to uh, to waterfall that down now to, to towards the tyres are actually made in the same facility as where the Formula One tyres are made. Wow, um, which is which is great, and it's part of an ongoing program um, that we've that we've got with them. Um, oh. I love some of the details. Um, for example, on the steering wheel and some of the new, the new features that have been part of the model year iteration. So um, this is the steering wheel. It's, it's the driver's office. It's everything that you need on here, firstly, from a, from a road legal perspective in terms of, uh, of lighting and indicators and so on and so forth. So there's the start-stop button. Um, obviously, um, it's a manual car, so basically it's a six-speed manual uh, sequential gearbox. Um, and instead of actually taking your hand off the off the wheel with a manual shift what we've got is you basically pull these paddles um, that sends a signal 
um, through the steering wheel uh, and ultimately the actuator fires a slug of air and changes gear that all happens in around 50 milliseconds which is twice as fast as you can blink so it's pretty close to a seamless gearbox um, uh, that's incredible so love love that but then what we've also added recently is these two new features we've got an auto upshift so what that will do is it means that the car will automatically change gear at the optimum point in the rpm because this car, got, car goes through the gears very very quickly um, and when you're on track and you've got a lot of things to manage it's a nice facility that you can put that on as an auto upshift um, you still have to downshift yourself obviously um, then we've also got this launch controls button as well um, unlike most manufacturers where it's a preset launch at a preset RPM, you can preset that at whatever RPM you want. You want to smoke the tyres away at eight grand, you can do. You just basically set it wherever you want it to, um, and then you mash your foot to the floor and, and, and release. Uh, That's awesome. And off it goes. So uh, there's some of the, the 2018, 2019 model year additions that this, that this car uh, has got. And then if you look inside as well, um, standard equipment, you've got, um, you've got the traction control, uh, so there's six positions for the traction control. You've got off, three wet, two dry. Just above that, you've got the main power circuit for the car. And then over on the right-hand side uh, of the cockpit, uh, you've got the plumbing fire extinguisher system, which is this. Uh, so there's two outlets in the cockpit, two outlets in the, uh, in the engine bay. And then, of course, you've also got the brake bias that allows you to shift the balance of the brakes forward and aft, depending on whether you're... Uh, You've got a wet, uh, a wet or a dry track, or depending on just how much grip there is, whether you're on the road or the slick tyre. Wow. So it um, allows you to configure a lot of things. And then the same can be said about uh, the actual dampers themselves. So this is uh, the, the suspension system is a, uh, is a twin wishbone push rod um, suspension. You can probably uh, see that right there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so what that means is, is with the push rod, we're basically trans, uh, translating the wheel movement into the damper through the motion ratio that we've got in the rock. We're actually magnifying the wheel movement into this damper. So we've got this lovely long tr suspension travel. It means we can really refine the control on where we need it for initial roll control and put lots of damping in that particular area, but then allow the car to be outside of that area to be really compliant. So, for example, for use on the road or if you using curbs at tracks that it allows the car to be uh, to be well damped and well sprung um, but also that you can basically change the basic settings so um, you'll notice here we've got uh, this is the remote adjust for for the bump uh, you can make the car um, softer or harder or less or more damping in this case and then you've also got the rebound as well which is done on the uh, on the main on the main damper there that's exactly the same on the rear um, so you can basically adjust um, the car to suit your driving style, depending on how you want the car to feel. Um, you can uh, you can tailor it. So this car really offers no end of, of tailoring in terms of its visual appearance um, and then its mechanical um, its mechanical components to, to, to what what you as a customer wants. Very cool. And of course, you know, like the most important part is Gordon Ramsay has one of these, so I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still yet to take him up on his offer of, uh, of a seat at the chef's table, actually, for that. So we've been invited many times, but we haven't had the, t the, the chance or the time to take him up on that. But no, we've got, we've got a lot, lot, of, cool, lot of cool owners. Um, and, you know, it's really flashing for Ian and I and the whole company that we've got customers in almost 40 countries worldwide um, that, that share the same ethos as as we do in terms of uh, in terms of what the car stands for and what, it, what it's all about. I mean, seeing it in person, I completely understand. Yeah, really. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Hey, man. absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks yes. for dropping by. You guys are awesome. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, man. Thank you. Okay.